that two much, much older women listened to a very inexperienced younger woman and a group of us and decided to put their faith in us. And because of those two extraordinary women of a very different generation supporting utterly different type of work, this has happened and has become, as Anna said, the largest single annual celebration of women's creativity in the world. So could you all please raise your glass to the anonymous donor? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Right, the moment you've been waiting for. Please welcome to the stage... Uh, no, no, that was not the moment you've been waiting for to start talking. <laughs> Dear, I should have been in charge of school. Um, will you please welcome to the stage the chair of the 2022 judging panel, Marianne Seacott. Well, thank you, Kate, and thank you all for coming. This has been an incredible year for fiction written by women. And I'm deliberately not calling it women's fiction because it's fiction for the whole of humanity. <laughs> Covering the human condition in all its glories and horrors. So it's also been an incredible process reading all the submissions to the prize in the past nine months. And I've been blessed with a wonderful judging panel who are all here tonight. Lorraine Candy, Anita Setti, Pandora Sykes, and Dorothy Coombson. And they are all great writers themselves and come from a range of backgrounds and genres. So that's hugely enriched our discussions. And I really want to thank Dorothy, Pandora, Anita, and Lorraine for their commitment, their hard work, their integrity, and when it came to the choosing, their amicable debate <laughs> because to narrow 175 books all submitted by their publishers as the best of their lists down to 16 was hard enough there were books that we loved that didn't even make the long list and to choose six from 16 was more difficult still and as for choosing the outright winner it could have been agony but thanks to everyone's determination to be generous in their approach, we made it through without a scratch. So thank you very much. Now, the final six are a wonderfully diverse range of stories, subjects, settings, and authors. From the experience of a Native American woman in a haunted bookshop to an early female aviator in the Antarctic. One novel is narrated by a tree, as you do. Another by a book. Some are laugh-out-loud funny, others tearful, and sometimes the two are combined in the same book. We judges have just loved reading them all, and we commend them to you as the best fiction written by women in English in the past year. So before I come to telling you who the winner is, which I know you're all waiting for, I'm going to talk briefly about the final six in alphabetical order, so I'm not giving you any hints... <laughs> There's The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini. <laughs> a deeply humane story set in Trinidad which immerses the reader and is full of warmth and humour and sadness. The Sentence by Louise Erdrich. <laughs> a ghost story set in a bookshop whose main character is a Native American woman and it's smart and original and witty. Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. A compassionate look at long-term mental illness and the ramifications on a marriage and an entire family. It's brilliantly spiky and often hilarious. The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Izeki. A beautifully written and original book full of insight and philosophy, but also funny and clever and readable. The Island of Missing Trees by Elif Shafak. <laughs> hauntingly beautiful tale of loss and identity, love and redemption, told via the unusual connection a young London girl has with Cyprus via a fig tree. And Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. <laughs> I think we've got about equal support here, actually. <laughs> which is a story that weaves together the lives of a 1950s vanished female aviator and the Hollywood millennial who plays her on screen. It's 
epic in its sweep and is both feminist and full of adventure. So before I announce the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction 2022, I would like to invite each of the shortlisted authors up onto the stage. Lisa Allen Agostini, The Bread the Devil Need. <laughs> Louise Erdrich, The Sentence, represented by her editor, James Gerber. Meg Mason, Sorrow and Bliss. Ruth Ozeki, The Book of Form and Emptiness. Elif Shafak. The Island of Missing Trees. Maggie Shipstead, Great Circle. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to announce the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction 2022. The winning book, we felt, stood out for its originality, its sparkling writing, its warmth, depth, intelligence, humor, and poignancy. A celebration of the power of books and reading, it tackles big issues of life and death and is a complete joy to read. Ladies and a few gentlemen, <laughs> the winner of the Women's Prize for Fiction 2022 is The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ezeki. also feels so unbelievably random because these are some of the most amazing women writers I have ever met in my life and it's been such a privilege to be here amongst them. Somehow you make us all feel like winners and, and we are, right? I mean, we are. Um, I, I really want to, uh, I want to thank, I, you know, there are so many people who are behind me and we can't do it alone. Um, so I'd first like to thank um, my Canongate publishing team, right? I'm sorry, you know, Jamie Bing, we all know Jamie Bing, and he has brought the fun back into publishing for me. Jenny Fry and Anna Frame. And Aisha Houghton has just been such a support the whole way through. I want to thank um, Viking Penguin, my, my publishers in the U.S., Paul Slovak and Andrea Schultz, 
and in Canada, Nicole, um, Nicole Winstonley and, and Deborah Sun de la Cruz, um, who have been really supportive. I'm a, I'm a dual citizen, so, um, the, you know, I am supported on both, you know, on both sides of the border. Um, my agents, Molly Friedrich and Lucy Carson, unbelievable dynamic duo, and Caspian Dennis, who is here tonight. <laughs> you know, it's kind of embarrassing because one of the things when, when one is nominated for a prize, one does have to think, you know, what if, right? And so then you prepare a little speech, right? And then you think, I, I'm never going to give this. <laughs> um, but one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot is how I would not be here without the support of women and women's institutions. And this is, this is why this prize is so important to me. All my life I've been supported by women and women's institutions and all my life I've been trying to give back and so this is one of the reasons why this is so important. I went to one of the oldest existing women's colleges in the United States, Smith College, because, because Sylvia Plath went there. And, and when I was little I thought I really want to be a poet. But while I was at Smith I learned that my true love was writing fiction and I was supported in that. Um, now I've returned to Smith as a professor because I wanted to share that love of fiction with a, you know, the up-and-coming generation of young women writers. And um, I just, I'm a firm believer in bootstrapping, that women have to support each other and bootstrap each other. One of my students, Layla, one of my students, Layla Motley, just turned 20 today, and her book, um, Night Crawling, she's in town right now, promoting it, and it um, was just the Oprah pick. She, and so this is, she is a new woman to watch. When I, when I decided at one point that I wanted to be a filmmaker, um, I uh, w received fiscal sponsorship from Women Make Movies, another institution that supports women's voices, bringing women's voices into the world, and I then served on their board for many years. Um, later, you know, when I wrote my first book, um, it was acquired by Carol DeSanti, who is, um, was my classmate at Smith. And she supported me through the first three books um, that, that I published, the first three novels, and I couldn't have done this without her. She and I started a conversation about literature when we were 18 years old. <laughs> and we've continued. She's one of my oldest friends. We believed, in, we believed in the old girls network, <laughs> even when we were really young. <laughs> and, and the last part of my, my old girls network that I want to mention is Hedgebrook Farm, which is a not-for-profit women's writing retreat center on Whidbey Island on the west coast of, um, of the country. I, I, after my mother's death, I um, had a serious... Uh, writer's block. I just, I couldn't write. And the um, women at Hedgebrook kind of took me in and, um, and it's really because of them that I'm able, you know, that I was able to finish uh, my third novel and, and I, it's why I'm here today. Um, so I just, again, you know, this is a, another women's institution that has just been, you know, that is working hard to do exactly what we're all trying to do here. So I just wanted to, I wanted to call out the names of the, the women who have supported me and the institutions that have supported me because now more than ever, as, as Kate so beautifully said, it, it, this is, you know, this is a time that we need to speak out and, and, you know, we need to rewrite somehow the dominant narratives that have landed us into quite dire straits. And, it, this, this prize has never been more timely and I just thank you and, Bessie thanks you all too. <laughs> Thank you. Right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it uh, for the formal part. Uh, the Bailey's bar is open, the bar bar is open, the shop is waiting to take your money, and the final thing. There are fewer men than there are women here tonight, uh, but they're the same number of loos. So women, use the men's loos. See you next year. <laughs>